So I saw this Elon Musk interview where there was this young kid interviewing him. And honestly, it, it didn't blow my mind because I expected this. I don't think there's a single super successful person who doesn't operate this way. But it was really nice to see it put in the words and just confirmed uh, by Elon. So this child asked him, you know, you spend your entire life giving up so much. You have 15 hour work days. How do you give up so much and how do you avoid burnout? And so Elon got really quiet and took this almost sober tone. Uh, he went from being like kind of happy go lucky to really serious. And he got close to the kid, looked him in the eye very intently and said, you have to apply these tenets in your life. And these tenets are this one, you must be extremely woke. Wokeness is the most important thing Two, You must empty your house. Three, you must find a billionaire business advice guy to get advice from who also has a great body is extremely good looking and is PG. So you can watch the tips with your family and friends. And the number six, he said, is the most important. Buy Black Mamba Meat from Alex Becker, who's the most woke, most successful YouTuber, best looking. <laughs> yeah. Let's get into it, guys. I don't want to waste any more time on jokes. So in this video, I want to talk about burnout because you guys have seen the last videos. I've talked about nightmare mode. If you're new to this channel, I have a house that has nothing in it. I only eat chicken and spinach. I don't do anything fun. I don't partake and you can just watch the other videos and see what a lame duck I am on live streams in the common area. People constantly ask me, how do you deal with burnout? How do you stay disciplined to this? And unlike every other guru on YouTube, I want to completely be transparent with you. It is hard and I break all the time. And in this video, I'm going to discuss it because if you find yourself falling off your track, you find yourself losing discipline or having these spurts that you just can't keep going in your work, I'm going to show you to solve this in this video and it's going to cut days and months off of lost time for you. So if you don't have five minutes to watch this, go watch a cat video. But if you can't sit down and be disciplined enough to watch this very quick video, this is probably why you're not able to stick to something because you can't even stick to something that's made to help you. In fact, uh, a few days ago, I had a couple beers. And I started falling into using social media. I was watching YouTube videos again. And basically all the things I preach, I, I completely collapsed at. And with those things, like I talked about in prior videos, it's, it's a vicious cycle. When one thing falls, the other thing falls. You start losing motivation on your business. Uh, you start wanting to socialize and, and hang out with people too much. You start wasting your time. You start sleeping in. You start feeling lethargic. It all just collapses on itself. And it's kind of almost humiliating when it happens. If this has happened, you might relate because uh, you feel like you've almost been tricked because when you're in that really good flow state, you're in that good streak of work you're actually happy. You feel like you're getting stuff done and then you get really excited and then you want to go and do debauchery. You want to go and do silliness, whatever your vices are, social media, bad food, alcohol, um, excessive socializing and going out. You think this is going to make you more happy and all it is, is just kind of illusion. It drags you back into the state you were trying to get away from in the first place. It's this endless loop that people go through and this is going to happen. It happens to me a lot. Okay. Uh, I'm actually, I default to being the most undisciplined person ever to me. It's almost as important as knowing how to stick to it as what to do when you break it. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. And that's what I do basically when I have a collapse for lack of better words. And so let's begin the first thing you got to do. And this is a really quick one. You got to recognize the collapse happening. And it happens very subtly and then it barrel rolls out of control. I don't think that's the right term. Do a barrel roll. All right. But, um, it's going to, it's going to snowball out of control. It's going to start with you checking a Facebook post and then it's going to, you're going to start checking Twitter and you're gonna be like, Oh, I wonder what people are saying in their news feeds. And the next thing you know, uh, you're having a rice crispy treat and, and spanking the monkey nude in the street. Okay. Maybe not the last part, but it, it, it goes on one thing into another and then another first you're checking social media, then you're watching TV, then you're playing video games and you're drinking a beer. And so recognize first off when things start to break one at a time, say, okay, I'm doing this thing and then watch the next thing break and then watch the next thing break. And you're going to spot that. And it's not about preventing it at this point. It's about recognizing that it's happening and then knowing exactly how to go through it in your mind to stop it because stopping it is actually very hard. And what you have to do is you have to stop making deals with yourself. You have to stop uh, allowing yourself to slide. And this is actually a real challenge to do because it doesn't seem like you're doing anything bad until you're really steep down there and convincing yourself to do it and motivating yourself to snap back is the hardest part. The first, and I think the most important thing you need to realize is you are going to die. 
your time is extremely finite. You don't have actually very much time uh, to live. There is going to be a day where a doctor probably comes and tells you, hey, you got like a couple months left to live, dude. That's it. You, you, don't, you don't have any more time. You're out. You're done. I want you to really think about that. Like, you should really start thinking about your death. Because if, if you actually start thinking about your death, the first thing your mind is going to do, you're going to feel like a shrieking feeling and your mind's going to push you off in a different direction. Like, don't think about that right now. But you should think about it because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And there's going to be a time where you have a month left, a week left, a couple days left. And you should think to yourself right now, what if you were diagnosed with something deadly today? How would you be living your life then? Now, of course, I'm not saying go jump on a plane and travel around the world doing drugs. I'm not saying that. Okay, we're not going in the F off mode. You need to think about if I had a finite amount of time left, how would I stop wasting time on dumb stuff? Would I be checking Instagram? Would I be checking social media? Would I be drinking a whole lot? Maybe. Would I spend time playing video games? Would I spend time watching reruns of The Office? No, you would want that time to be impactful. And the honest truth of it is, you don't have that much time to be doing impactful things. You don't have that much time to be achieving what you wanna do. And the real scary thing about it is you're gonna to get to that point and it's gonna sneak up on you. No one's ever just going wrong and planning for their death. That, that doesn't happen. You're just gonna to get to a point and someone's gonna let you know and then that's it, you're out of time. And the worst thing that could ever happen in that point is, yeah, in that time period, you can go on vacation, go on F off mode. But at that point, all the things you want to do and all the potential you, you wanted to hit in your life, it's gone. It's, it's pretty much gone at that point. It's, you've, you've, you've hit your high score, it's, it's downward, you're on your way out. So knowing that's gonna happen, you have to think to yourself, do I actually have time to be checking Kim Kardashian's Instagram? Do I have time to be looking into these conspiracy theories on Facebook? Do I have time to be watching TV and playing video games? Answer is really, if you care and you wanna avoid that ultimate suffering, the ultimate pain of ultimate failure, when you are told that you have a couple months left to live and there's nothing you can do about it, and you realize, oh man, all that stuff I wanted to do, all those things I wanted to achieve, that's going to make you a bit more thankful for the time you have right now. And so the first thing you need to realize is that I'm alive right now and start being thankful for today. Imagine that you almost died yesterday. Okay. Imagine that you, that diagnosis, you, that critical illness that was going to happen to you, that was going to knock you out. That just got removed. What are you going to do with your time now? Everything's a bonus going forward. That's how you need to start viewing your time. And then suddenly you're going to feel really ridiculous sitting and binging on people's Snapchats for a few hours. Good, good use of your time when death is right around the corner. And that first step is used to motivate you to then look at what reality really is and look at what society and, and your life is. It's a tug of war between you and other people. That's, that's all it really is. And when you're breaking, you're losing that tug of war between what other people want you to be. You start thinking, oh, I'm gonna start using this software. I'm gonna start playing video games. I'm gonna be doing this thing. I'm gonna be doing this thing because it makes me short term happy. It feels good and people say I can. And what's being happening is you're falling into other people's games. Those video games were made by other people. The phone you're using made by other people. The temptation to go out to bars and drink and all these, they're all invented by other people. It's all the rest of the world bringing you in and infecting you. Now it seems dramatic, but that's what it is. The world is infectious. And if you aren't constantly fighting this disease off, it's going to overtake you. And so if you start looking at the things you're doing and the nonsense you're doing as part of you, as part of what you want to do, instead of looking at it for what it is, an infectious disease that's trying to take over you, you're going to constantly lose this battle. If you don't view other people's invented stuff for what it is, something separating you from yourself, you're always gonna view this as like something that's normal. It's okay, it's okay. Everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is doing it. That's great, but everybody else and what they're doing does nothing to do with you and what you wanna get out of your life and what you want to achieve. And so by going and succumbing to this stuff because you think it's okay, you think this is part of you living your life, you're, you're always just gonna fall back into it because it's the place you're going to default to. You should default to you and what your expectations are. This is not acceptable. This is not a place you wanna be. This is not a place you go back to once you've achieved the version of you. Because a lot of people think, I'm gonna work hard and get really focused and I'm gonna fall back into all the garbage. This isn't a destination. This isn't some island you can go back and live on. Because if you, the second you start going back and living on this island, you become more involved in what other people's form and thoughts and how life should be instead of yours. 
You need to always stay here. This is the only island you can live on. If you don't view this like a plague, you're not going to avoid it. You're gonna always embrace it eventually. And when you do, you're not gonna try and stop yourself because you think it's okay. And you can't do this because people's stuff is poison. I'm not saying, oh, think for yourself and be an individual and ignore everybody else out there. Look at the behavior of most people. They are obsessed with poisonous behavior. In fact, 70% of our lives is built around poisonous behavior. Most people spend their time watching TV, doing dumb stuff, putting crap in their body. They're completely out of control. You cannot go and think, oh, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go and use this as an excuse to do stuff. No, it is an infection. You must constantly keep removing from your body. An infection doesn't come in and feel like it's something big and painful. It slowly happens. And then you're in the same poisonous behaviors and the same poisonous lifestyle, getting nothing that you want, just like everybody else. And so what you need to do is you need to spot all the infectious things that are infecting your life. Look at all the ways that you've broken and the way that you hit burnout. And then what you need to do is you need to start thinking actively about how you're going to prevent those in the future. You don't just go and hit burnout. You don't just go and hit mistakes and they go, okay, I'm just going to be better this time. You at bare minimum should write it down and say, what happened here? What started this chain of events? And then what does my pattern look like when I'm collapsing? And if you have that stapled somewhere, you have what starts a chain of events, you know, at least to avoid things, you know exactly how the pattern is going to look like you're going to be able to identify it a lot quicker. For example, what you should identify is the behaviors and also the thought patterns and negotiations your brain starts throwing at you, the things you start to think. For example, I'll get about 14 days into like a really good streak of productivity and my brain's going to start throwing all sorts of things at me like, oh, time to go see your friends. You've earned it. You've earned it is the best argument in your brain. You've earned it. You've earned it. You've earned the, the, the right to go and make yourself unhappy and separate yourself from the happiness that you're experiencing. You've earned the right to destroy the things that are making you happy and moving you forward. You've earned it. It's like building a skyscraper and be like, I built it. Now I've earned the right to just tear it all down because it seems like fun for a weekend, okay? And you're gonna start feeling and seeing the same behaviors popping out. You're gonna say, okay, maybe it's time to crack open a beer or go have a big old cheat meal, okay? Again, it's like you built up a skyscraper. Oh man, I've earned the right to just get a sledgehammer and go smash it, because it's gonna be fun this Saturday. But cracking open a beer, eating cake, and going and playing video games for eight hours, that isn't a reward. That's taking you away from your happiness. That's taking away from the thing that's fulfilling you, the thing you wanna do with your life, and removing it. It's a punishment. It's a punishment. It's like taking cyanide. And so your brain tricks you into these dopamine triggers because it thinks that's what you want. It feels you getting happy and go, oh, you've earned it. It's time to go and double down and let's get even more high. Let's get even more high. When really what it's doing is you already are high and your brain's like, what do we do next? What do we do next? Go do drugs. And so if you can recognize the arguments your brain's going to make, you can recognize the behaviors when they start. Those temptations when they start to pop up. You can then think to yourself beforehand, well, how am I going to ignore or win this argument? What, what do I really want? When, what temptation should I be really on the lookout for? Because that, that's when I know I'm starting to get weak. And what do I really want? Do I want the results of losing this argument? Do I want the results of this break right now? Do I want the results of this temptation? How am I going to feel afterwards? Your brain doesn't live in the future. It lives in right now. It's not considering these things. So you have to have counters to these. You gotta have counters and you have to have them clearly defined before they come up. You're not gonna, in the moment, you're not gonna be like, oh. In the moment, you're gonna be stupid and your brain and your body is going to be in control. What I'm going to usually try to do is you have to take back control from your body and mind. So what do I mean by that? Your mind is constantly doing its own effery, all right? Your body's constantly trying to pull you in ways for dopamine. What you need to do is you need to completely separate yourself by doing something that really sucks. What I usually do is fasting. Because usually whenever I collapse, it also comes with eating bad food and whatnot. So I have some calories to burn. But what I'm going to do is I'm usually going to do about a 48 to 72 hour fast, usually about a 48. And what this does is three things. First off, it takes back your power from your body because you're just like, no, I'm not, I'm not partaking in silliness. I'm not going to go and do what you want to do. I'm going to sit here and suffer through this thing. And by doing that suffering, it allows you to not be controlled by your body. Because look, when you're fasting, you're, you're suffering, but you're not really damaging your body. It's just your body telling you it doesn't like this. Nothing actively bad is happening to you. It's actually quite healthy for you. And you're going to lose some weight and be a little bit more fit when it's all done. By doing that, you take the power back. Then secondly, it puts this barrier between you and the nonsense. When you've done a 48-hour fast and you just got past all the stuff, you're not going to want to slip back. 
You just went through this really long streak. You don't want to go back into another fast, do you? It creates this, oh, I don't really want to do that again kind of vibe. And then the next thing you got to do is you got to realize what's happening to you right now and your temptation to keep going down this path. It's an illusion. Those good feelings, the things that are telling you, hey, keep doing this, hey, it's okay. Those negotiations your brain is giving you, they are not good predictors of what's going to make you happy. If you keep going down this path, it's not going to make you happy. They are all illusions. They are all tricks given to you by your brain. That sounds weird, thinking that you're fighting your brain, it's trying to trick you, but, you're, but your brain is just a computing device that's looking at ones and zeros. It sees dopamine, it sees pain, and it's really just trying to say, how can I go towards the one and get away from the zero? That's great in caveman times. It doesn't work in our times when there's so many ones around that your brain just gets lost. And so you need to stop this negotiation with your because it's just going to keep telling you to slide because your brain doesn't know any better. Your brain is not, it's not thinking logically. It's looking at a very basic equation and trying to get you to operate by some base code. That's actually really stupid. It's, it doesn't work very well. And the best way to knock yourself out of this is realize that most of the time it's luring you towards illusions of happiness, not actually happiness. The cake, TV, video games, drinking, whatever your, your vices are. There's almost no time where you partake in these things and you're happy you did it afterwards. There is no time ever where I've watched eight hours of TV and be like, that was a good choice. There's no time ever when I've eaten a ton of bad food and not been like, man, I really wish I just had not eaten that. And you can think on and on and on about all the things you've fallen into. It never, ever works out well. And even other things like uh, materialistic greed or parting, it almost never ever, you never look back and say, man, I wish I had done that versus doing something else. Now, don't get me wrong. There's times in your life for socializing and all the fun stuff and whatnot. But most of the time when you're drifting, when you're sliding, you're not partaking in things that are worthwhile. They're generating real memories in your life. You're just partaking in nonsense that your brain has basically tricked you into. It's an illusion. And you're going to be very tempted to go to this illusion. It's going to make sense. The negotiation from your brain is going to be like a perfectly copyrighted sales video because it knows you. It knows every single thing that you're going to do to talk yourself out of something. And so what you really need to understand is what do you want to do and who do you want to be and what things do you want to achieve? You should have them at least written down. Like I have everything that I want to achieve in my daily notebook and journal. And I have the rules and the person that I want to be. And that person you want to be in achieving that, that's where the happiness is. That's not an illusion. You know that. And you know what's right and you know what's wrong. You know the things that you need to do to be happy. The problem is always wanting them because your brain and how it registers what you want in the moment is not tied to that. And so instead of thinking and negotiating with your brain, have that very clear goal of who you want to be and that's what you use to make decisions with. It's very hard to do. It's very hard to do. And you have to really motivate yourself by the stuff I talked about before. And then the final two tips are really simple. Stop viewing your life in streaks. Stop viewing your work in streaks. So it's, it's really easy when you're on like a 14 day streak of whatever type of focus or zone you're in. For example, in the last few videos, I discussed nightmare mode where I, I drop all uh, dopamine triggering things. And I just work and work and work and learn and learn and learn. And actually when I'm in that state, I know I'm happiness. I feel the best. I feel the best around people. I feel the best in my life. I feel the best with my progress. I'm, I'm very happy. It's easy to stay in that streak. If you're viewing it as a streak, like, Oh, I'm 14 days in. I don't want to go back. But the second you break that streak, it makes it very hard to reset. Cause you're like, Oh, one day I'll just slide for a few days or I'll just slide for the rest of the day or something like that. And so viewing things in streaks is very uh, unmotivating when you're not deep into a streak. And so what you need to start viewing as is you're, you're living backwards, okay? And you have this set amount of days and the goal isn't to be in a streak the entire time. The goal is to spend as many times in that state of flow and moving in the right direction. You want to view your life as almost like a big chart. Think of all the days of your life as a big chart. And then put red arrows going backwards or green arrows going forwards. You want to spend as many of those days with green arrows going forward. You want to look at that overall percentage of it. And so when you start thinking about it this way, when you start to drift, when you start to slide off, when you start to F off, you're going to say, dude, I only have a hundred days. I only have this many days. I'm taking from the pile of very finite days that I have. Is this day going to be a backwards or a forward day? And that makes it a lot easier to say, okay, cool. We're not, we're not spending more days backwards. I don't have that many of these actually. And then the final thing is don't dwell on it. You're going to almost feel a little bit humiliated or at least mad at yourself or just like, what, what happened? And you're going to resent it because you just spent weeks and weeks working towards this way and then you ate 8,000 calories of cake or something like that. What's done is done and dwelling on it is just going to demotivate you more. 
it's over. And frankly, you should be excited because it gives you more data on how to learn how to avoid that in the future, how to recognize the patterns and then go, okay, wait, halt. And so you can really turn into a game on how fast you can get back to uh, being the disciplined person that you want to be. And that's really it guys. As always guys, if you like videos like this, be sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell because I do run ads to people that hit that demographic. I can target in Google ads. And I spent a couple bucks a day running ads that just gave away thousands of dollars of old courses I've built on beginning businesses. Courses that show I built my first seven figure businesses, how I buy ads, how to start your first business as a beginner. It's literally all there. But in order to see that, you have to subscribe, hit the notification bell and also like this video and it will put you in that little slot to see those ads. If you don't do that, you won't see it. And then and also, if you guys want to see a little bit more on like my lifestyle and how I actually do that, there's a video after this that shows how I use minimalism to be a lot more lethal as an entrepreneur, stay a lot more focused. There's a video on how to do dopamine detoxes, which basically unlatches your brain from all these addictions, social media, all these things. Makes it 10 times easier to focus. Also makes you a lot more happy. And there's also a series of videos that shows how I built an eight-figure business with ads, which I think you might enjoy if you're looking for business help. So that's it.